I think it's time to start speaking up on a really kind of scary, little bit taboo topic, and that's perimenopause. Stay tuned. Okay, so where do I start with this kind of scary, kind of taboo topic that nobody really talks about? I did a video earlier this week about coconut oil and I kind of stuck a little blurb in there about, you know, when you're starting to get older as a woman, um, because of hormonal changes, your skin, your hair starts drying out. Um, coconut oil is great for that. But it just prompted me to just cut to the chase and go ahead and write a blog post, which I'm going to link below and make this video talking about perimenopause and things you can do to empower yourself and get through it in a healthy, natural, effective way. Perimenopause um, is a scary and taboo topic, I think, because genuinely no one talks about it. There may be exceptions. Some of you may have come from families with matriarchs who sat you down and gave you the rundown, but it's not something we learn about outside of going through it and maybe commiserating with other women. And um, I've been very fortunate to have a few women in my life that approach health in the same way that I do, that are going through the changes that I'm going through. And we just have kind of bounced off each other and spoken to our integrative doctors and done the research and found some really great ways to manage all of those nasty symptoms that come with being in that peri part of your life. Um, and I also wanted to come on and talk about it because for several reasons, I believe, um, that are almost unavoidable, unavoidable be it um, environmental exposures to endocrine disruptors, uh, the, the, the toxins in our food, in the products that we use on our bodies to wash our clothes, to clean our homes, um, medical interventions, uh, different prescriptions. There are so many different things that are causing women to start exhibiting perimenopause symptoms at younger and younger ages. It used to be re really rare to start having these symptoms um, under the age of 40. Now we're starting to see women barely in their 30s that are starting to go through perimenopause. So that's really concerning. That's a topic for the professionals uh, to maybe spend some time looking into because it's not normal. Um, but because this is happening and it's not something we can ignore, I really think it's important that as women, we share with each other the different ways that we can empower ourselves to get through these times in as healthy a way as possible. Now, there, um, having your village of women is super important. Seeking out, I have a love-hate relationship with social media, but seeking out online groups and forums of women going through it also really helps you because part of going through Perry is that you feel like you're losing your mind. Um, when you're dealing with a lot of major shifts in your hormones, um, you're just naturally gonna feel mood swings. You're gonna naturally have your anxiety levels go haywire. But one of the interesting things about Perry is that you also start to suffer from, or a lot of women start to suffer from um, health anxiety because so many different things start to happen to your body that are very strange that you've never felt before. And um, just, you know, to give you a quick rundown, it's not just the hot flashes, which is really the only thing I ever heard about growing up. And I think most of us, that's it. Like grandma and mom tells you about her hot flashes and that's it. But there's so much more. Your digestion changes. Um, your liver is work, you're working, you know, over time. Um, your skin is not the same. You'll start breaking out. And at the same time, you're having like hormonal acne the rest of your skin starts drying out. You may get patchy, um, irritated skin. Um, you uh, start having different sleep patterns, not great sleep patterns. You'll have aches and pains that you've never had before in parts of your body where, you know, aches and pains are maybe kind of concerning. Um, mood changes, um, cognitive changes. It's almost like rolling together really, really bad PMS 
with really, really bad pregnancy symptoms and really, really intense puberty symptoms all in this nasty ball and just kind of having it land on your lap and you're just left overwhelmed. And that sense of overwhelm is actually massive during this time in a woman's life as well. So um, the more we know to expect these things, the better. I have, you know, I will say that I go through more good months now, especially that I have like my regimen of things that I use to help me but you know once in a while i'll have a month where i'm just like jesus i feel like i'm gonna keel over and and it's scary um for example i can't metabolize caffeine like i used to and i can have my cup of coffee in the morning and that's it if i have any other form of caffeine it kind of sends me almost into a panic attack mode and that's one of the scariest things i've ever gone to through um i had like a yerba mate tea one afternoon several months ago and I had had coffee in the morning and I genuinely ended up on the floor with heart palpitations with my cell phone in my hand thinking, am I going to have to call 911? Am I having a heart attack? Like what's happening? These are the types of things that nobody prepares you for. Um, a lot of women going through peri also will end up having tremors where they'll be laying in bed and all of a sudden... It just feels like everything inside of your body is just like shaking, even though you're not literally, it's just your insides and it's just crazy. So that sense of village and community is important because if you start hearing other women talk about these things, it makes you a little less scared about what you're actually going through. Um, because even though it sucks and it's horrible, at least it's part of this perimenopause joyful dance we all have to go through as women. And I do think keeping open communication with our partners is important too, um, because they don't know and they will never know what it's like. Um, so you might as well tell them so they can kind of, you know, have some compassion or understanding or just run for the hills while you're going through it in order to survive, right? So um, I wanted to share the things that have really helped me. Um, like I said, I have much more good months then I do bad months. But um, one of my first kind of symptoms was hot flashes. So I started having hot flashes and I uh, knock on wood, don't have those anymore for the time being. Um, but there are other things that, you know, I do deal with. I also started to develop hormonal acne, which I was able to get under control as well with some of the stuff that I use, um, as well as like insomnia. That's a big one for a lot of us. <clears throat> Excuse me, I might lose my voice soon. Um, and anyway, so there's just a lot. And I'm sorry if this is kind of a disorganized video, but typically I do my blog post first. So I, I organize my thoughts and then I do my video. But today I'm doing things words because I just wanted to get out here and share. So um, I did want to put a little side note in that, you know, if you're feeling like your symptoms are oh, completely overwhelming and really affecting the quality of your life, or you're really, really concerned about a new ache pain or whatever, please seek medical attention. That's so important. Um, I will always, always, always advocate that you try, if you're able, to find a functional or integrative doctor. I think it is so essential for all aspects of health, and especially when you're going through these kinds of major changes, to find a doctor that understands both holistic and allopathic medicine and marries them so that you can have just like an entire um, encompassing healing experience. I do take issue with doctors that are prescription happy that do not see you as an individual and do not see your symptoms as individual symptoms and that do not understand how to treat the root cause of things. Doctors that just kind of want to throw meds at you and say take this because whatever, you need to be wary about that because if you're able to approach these changes naturally first, 
you really should be able to, and you should have a doctor that understands that and that can educate you on that. A lot of dietary changes help during this time. Um, cutting down on carbs is really good. Always cutting down on sugar is going to help. Some women become lactose intolerant, so that's important. I personally cannot metabolize caffeine like I used to, so I can only have one cup of coffee a day. Um, otherwise, my heart just feels like it's going to explode out of my chest. Um, and, and, and just a doctor that uh, can understand all of the different aspects of perimenopause and all of the natural um, holistic ways to treat that. And that can explain, you know, like exercise and moving your body and how all of that will, will help is super key. So anyway, uh, before this video gets too long, I wanted to share real quick the things that I've been using um, for the past year. I just, I turned 48 in May. So I want to say at about 47 is when I started to have some of these symptoms. And I started to uh, do my research and talk to my integrative doctors and my girlfriends that were also going through this and that are like-minded when it comes to health. And these products have been absolute game changers. I don't know what I'd be doing without them, basically. And um I wanted to start with sharing about Progestins Plus. So Progestins Plus is an essential oil. Let's see if I can keep it out of the shine. Essential oil blend. And I actually did a whole blog post about this one, which I'll also link below. It got its very own post. But Progestins Plus is um, really an amazing blend of oils that are soothing and calming. Every friend of mine that's used it has had some amazing benefit from it. So I love hearing their stories and I love what it's done for me. Um, it's, it contains a bunch of different oils, including cedarwood, um, frankincense, copaiba, which I've also talked about, and wild yam. So wild yam is what makes this so good for women going through perimenopause because it is a bio-identical form of progesterone. And just a tiny little amount, I like to put it on the sides of my neck in the evening, along my arm, on my abdomen, or on my inner thighs. You kind of want to change it around um, when you use it. Has helped me with, with the hot flashes so much and has also really helped the quality of my sleep. So this stuff is incredible. The other essential oil blend that I use is Endoflex. Can you see it? Endoflex. And this has sage, geranium, German chamomile, myrtle, and nutmeg. And this oil helps to balance your endocrine function. So your hormones, really, really, really important. And I like to just put it along my thyroid in the morning, just one little drop. So these are so highly concentrated that all you need is like a couple of drops and the change is almost immediate and incredible. I'm gonna go ahead and link below where you can find them if you'd like to try them yourself. The other thing that was a game changer for me, my one of my good girlfriends up in Portland told me about, I started getting pretty intense cystic breakouts um, during perimenopause or the beginning stages of it, and she recommended Vitex or Chasteberry. I really love this stuff. So this is a religious one I take. I started taking it after two weeks. The cystic acne resolved itself and it's been good so far. Again, knock on wood. Um, but this is a natural way to help balance estrogen and raise progesterone levels. It also helps to lower prolactin levels and it just helps with, like I said, hormonal acne and it's also really good for PMS sim symptoms. Symptoms? Symptoms. I also take primrose oil. So this is really great. I started taking this because my family has a history of um, fibrocystic breast disease. And this is a uh, primrose oil is a fantastic oil for overall breast health. It helps reduce breast pain during PMS, during perimenopause. It helps to reduce hot flashes. It's just great for general PMS symptoms as well. And this is also great for keeping your skin clear of hormonal acne. Then I've got three homeopathic remedies. 
I know people are a little bit wary of homeopathic remedies. Um, for me, I have found them to be incredibly beneficial, um, starting out when my children started using them when they were little. And I saw how well they worked um, on them. And uh, my girlfriend started telling me about what she was using to help her deal with her prairie. And I decided to do my research and spoke to my homeopath friend. And these three remedies have been great for me. Now with homeopathy, um, not all remedies work for all people. A lot of them depend on what your constitution is. So if you want to go down that rabbit hole and kind of research what works for your constitution, your personality type and all that, that's great. But in general, these remedies are really, really good for peri symptoms. So the first one that I have is sepia. Sepia. And sepia 200 helps with hormonal imbalance. I've got my little notes here so I don't miss anything menopause and perimenopause symptoms, helps with PCOS symptoms, menstrual irregularities, and anxiety. So anxiety is huge, both regular and just health-based anxiety when you're going through perimenopause, and this really, really helps. Um, the Vitex, I forgot to tell you, I take once a day as soon as I get out of bed with water in the morning. I take the Super Primrose once a day as well with my breakfast. The sepia, I would take every other day, two or three pellets under the tongue. And when you're taking homeopathic remedies, you don't want to have anything 15 minutes before or 15 minutes after. Let it sit under your tongue, time it, then after the 15 minutes, you're free to do as you please. And then Lycopodium clavitum is the other um, homeopathic remedy that I have found to be very effective. This helps support memory and cognitive function, which Believe it or not, like, you know, pregnancy brain ladies, for those of you who've had babies, uh, perimenopause gives you similar brain function, which is kind of concerning. <laughs> so this I have found to be very helpful. It also helps with liver support and digestion. Your digestion gets weird when your hormones are all over the place. And perimenopause and, di and digestion do a weird dance together. So Lycopodium helps tremendously and I will take um, two pellets under the tongue every other day. So I kind of go back and forth with these. One day this, one day this, one day this, one day this. And then the last one is Ignatia Amara and this is another homeopathic remedy. I will take five of these under the tongue before I go to bed as needed. Ignacia Amara is really good for mood and emotion balancing and it's also good for digestion. So um, this one is constitutionally good for me, it kind of describes me to a T when you read um, the type of people that do best with Ignacia Amara. So um, just worth looking into. That's my little arsenal of perimenopause goodness. There's my little guy back there. Um, and I, I can tell you that it has been an absolute game changer when it comes to how I've been feeling. Um, the majority of the time I feel totally normal. Um, I do have months that are rough and I can tell, you know, because I just feel like taking off screaming um, to the nearest hammock and laying there and being left alone. But in general, um, I, I feel pretty good and I would not know that I was going through any of these symptoms until one of them decides to come around. But even then it's just, um, so much less intense than it could be. So I feel like, um, you know, doing what you can do to empower yourself, find out if what you're going through is normal, reach out to your girlfriends that are your age or older, find a support group online, do research, speak to a doctor that can help you, like I said before, in a holistic and allopathic way, um, and just take care of yourself because it's tough. We women go through so much and, you know, not to sound like, oh, you know, we're victims because we're certainly not, not. We are very tough to have to go through the things we go through, you know. Everybody goes through puberty, but, you know, you have babies, you go through all that, um, PMS, all of those things, and then you get hit with peri and then eventually menopause. So um, give me about 10 years and or maybe five, I don't know, hopefully 10, I'll tell you what that's like. But these are the things that work for me. I'm linking everything down below. Empower yourself, reach out. Um, if you have any questions about the products that I use and how they've helped me, let me know. And um, click like, subscribe, share. 
let's keep rewiring adulthood and perimenopause together. We'll see you next time. Thank you.